Poe wrote very dark stories about all sorts of horrific things that you can imagine. Like the raven or the telltale heart or the pit and the pendulum. Ah! But then in our story, he becomes responsible for what he writes. It appears my writing has become the inspiration to an actual killer. Please! So Fields sort of brings him to task and they have an uneasy alliance to start with. Are you up to the task, Mr. Poe? You know, Fields is very, very precise. If he can't explain it scientifically, he has a hard time believing that it exists. I believe the killer is taunting us. Poe studies human nature through the emotions that he feels. He's an empathic figure and logic goes out the window. The Pit and the Pendulum. Are there other stories in the collection? Specifically about murder. I'm afraid so. So the pairing was meant to be that Fields is doing the precursor of forensic science, and Poe is a modern profiler. I know this may come as a shock to you, Mr. Poe, but we are in dire need of your unwholesome expertise. And so it was very important for us to find the right person to play Fields just because of that central relationship between Fields and Poe. And the minute Luke walked in the room, we all felt like, well, that guy's a movie star. And B, we felt we'd be pretty lucky to have him. Mr. Poe, is this another of your stories? The mystery of Marie Rocher. I think Luke brings a great depth to the Fields character, one that you can read on his face, but also there's a lot going on behind the eyes. And he juxtapositioned against Poe was, you know, quite interesting as well. They're so sort of the light and the dark of each other's character. He's in, he's a, he's a great Fields, actually. This killer is methodical. He wants us to know he's going to strike again. And that's what's so interesting about this film, is these two journeys of these two people both have different objectives, but basically they're all trying to attain the same goal. I would gladly give my life for hers, Mr. Fields. I know you would. And so, yeah, it was. It, you could see that it was going to be a challenge to play these roles, and um, when I heard John was playing Poe, I just knew that this would be a fantastic chemistry, because Poe is a, essentially the father of science fiction and all that, and, and I can see that John Obviously, he loves playing him. Mr. Poe has a unique perspective on certain aspects of this crime. Why is the killer a raving alcoholic, an opium addict, an atheist? An atheist? Ah, oh, you misconstrue me, sir. Poe was a first professional writer in America. No one really had been paid to write. So all the things that he says and all the dialogue is basically stuff from his books and from his letters, since the movie had to really reflect the spirit of this guy's work. And so I'd say, oh, I really want him to say this. And I'd be like, what does that mean? I go, it's from one of his letters. Look. Hello, Reagan. What say you to a snifter for an old ailing friend? The, to this day, if you ask anyone, you know, what was Edgar Allan Poe like, they'll, oh, they'll say, oh, well, he was a morose, alcoholic drug abuser. A drink to any man in this room who can finish this line. Quote the Raven. Piss off! But he wasn't exactly that. It's much more than that. Oh, incredibly more than that. Yeah. I repeat, quote the raven! Never more! Ah, ah. It is a very favorite poem. Viva la France! I mean, the strength of character that it takes to be able to explore what he was exploring in his writing. He was the first to do this sort of thing, and he was doing it with an intensity that, that clearly shows he was living that in his head and that was manifesting itself in all the emotions that this dark side conjures and that takes enormous strength the dirt rose around her as her final breath of air slipped her into the twilight of consciousness until he goes to the place where other people don't go you know somebody like Poe is so complex and it's an interpretation of who he was, which is always extraordinary when you take a real life figure and attempt in some way to interpret his life, given the evidence we have, and then try to surmise in what way he as a person lived in this life. And John has been fantastic in terms of that exploration. Emily! John has been this really fantastic actor that has been in all sorts of different movies, but he hasn't really played a character that's so damaged as Poe is. I'm broke. And try laying off the liquor and the tinctures because it's rotting your brain. I only drink occasionally to be social. It just allowed him to expose himself to the world in a way that we've never seen him before. You've never seen him quite look like this. And to me, it was indicative of when John showed up 25 pounds lighter 
that I realized how seriously he's taking this role. This was a lucky one for me because it was one of those instant kind of no-brainer to be able to play Edgar Allan Poe. And then I met James McTeague, and he's a very, very sharp character with a lot going on. And so I figured it would be his and mine to kind of win or lose out there in Serbia, you know? So it was a very cool thing. <laughs> I think one of the intangibles about a director that you just never know until you get on set with them is how they're going to direct. And James is a fantastic director. That's the idea. James is a director that really likes to push the style of things. He also felt to me that based on his material, he hadn't really had that sort of opportunity to showcase a performance the way he's able to do here with the Raven. Take it away from you on the same angle that it's slanted at. You don't often come across scripts that really resonate with you and I think that this film was a great interesting concept that you could have a character being Edgar Allan Poe who's ultimately becomes a character in one of his own stories which I thought was a pretty cool concept. Rack through to him and then you'll get the firing out of focus. So I guess that's what attracted me to it. I think if you get a good script, if you cast it right then there's two sort of vital elements to making a good film. Yeah. Sometimes when you're casting, you put together your list of people you want, you wish for, and you have them come in and audition. And Alice was always on that list, always on a very short list, and she is a perfect Emily for us. <sighs> Miss Hamilton, please don't let me die in here. Ultimately, you want to believe that Poe will give his life for her, which ultimately he does. And I think Alice has like a really great mixture, you know, like she's very bright, Alice, but she's very beautiful as well. So she's a good Emily. We also have sort of angry Mr. Hamilton. He's a cantankerous old bastard. <laughs> played by the fantastic Brendan Gleeson. It would have been very easy for Brendan to play Hamilton very one note, which is this overbearing father figure. Out. But he really brought a nice cadence and light and shade to the character. Hey, whatever's wrong with you? I think James really got great performances out of his cast, but I think at the core of it was this idea of 1849 Baltimore through Poe's eyes. And so a lot of the conversations were about how do we create 1849 Baltimore without creating 1849 Baltimore? Obviously, we were shooting in Eastern Europe, and most of the things in Baltimore that you would want to shoot around anyway don't exist anymore. So in a lot of ways, it gave James and the rest of us a great deal of freedom to create this very dark and mysterious world uh, out of locations and things that we found in both Budapest and Serbia. You know, what I tried to do was make it like a Poe story, you know, like I think the Poe stories have this great macabre quality in the aesthetic and so I was saying to Danny the DP or Roger the production designer that I want it to be dark but I don't want it to be oppressively dark. You know, the whole idea for us was to create a dark looking film with a lot of soul. But it's also important for us to create this sort of old-fashioned style looking film but made in quite a contemporary way. So we're moving the camera a lot, we're creating lots of contemporary images which creates a sense of chaos. We've made the movie rather than attempted to be slaves to the period and the accuracy and authenticity. But having said that, the look, I think, is very successful for the film. The tunnels, for instance, are a really interesting set. There were actually real tunnels up in Novisad that Luke shot at for a night shoot once. And I saw them then. They were incredible. And they've recreated it. They are exact replicas of these tunnels. We filmed in some underground fortification tunnels at a castle in Novi Sad, which is defensive fortification tunnels, brick tunnels. So we had something to base our set on and created all these different spaces in the studio. I took moulds from the brickwork in those tunnels, brought it here to the studio and reproduced them. It's really exciting when you can find a location that's like just a great location. And then you have somebody like Roger in his mind augment that location and just make it perfect and serve the story so well. And I think that's probably very much the case in the, in the chamber where we filmed the pit and pendulum scene. It's just this extraordinary location. And he built this 
real live working pendulum. Some of the more difficult things um, was, of course, the pendulum set up, which eventually chopped somebody in half. The whole premise of the film is based around his most famous works, um, the gory ones, the murder, murder stories. Um, and basically what each of his stories um, inspires a serial killer to murder, um, inspired by the imagination of Poe and his works, quite accurately. The first time you meet Fields, he's at a crime scene and he uh, looks around this crime scene and realizes that there's something that's ringing a bell in his head. He's not entirely sure why, but the crime scene looks, sounds familiar, looks familiar. There's something, something weird about it. And so he goes investigating and researching and realizes it's actually a story that was printed, which was one of Poe's works. It's an interesting scenario when they first meet because he sort of, he can't really work Poe out. Because Fields is very methodical. He's very analytical. Slight, slight OCD. Um, and Poe is basically the opposite. We know that Emily's life is in the balance and I don't think the killer would think twice about killing her, but he loves the fact that we're all completely just desperate to work out, second guess him, guess him before he gets to the next one, you know. He's sort of the father of science fiction and murder novels and murder fiction and all that. And, and I can see that John obviously likes Poe. And um, you can see he loves playing him and it's fantastic to play off him because he stays in character quite a lot and it's really interesting to play off that. I never think it's John Cusack. I always think it's Edgar Allan Poe. It's great, it's fantastic, and it's a, it's a real privilege to be playing against somebody like John who is completely flawless in his performance, and it's really enjoyable. He, as a director, he provides you with, um, he provides you with a very free um, ability. He gives you a freedom on set. He allows you to just go with what you've got, and, and then he just tweaks it. What's your friend's name? John Cantrell. He was 28. Severed artery. Fled out fast. Didn't feel much for what it's worth. I wouldn't call them challenges in a negative sense. I'd call it challenge in a positive sense. And I love challenges. Yeah. That's what draws me to the world of acting is that everything is a challenge, everything is a new adventure and you pick new things up and you new, learn new crafts and it's like every job's a challenge.